forgot about this thing. Did uh, the steel it on the inside, and of course our signature, beautiful Drift HQ green on the outside. Fresh race car. We don't ever get to do this. Usually we get all clapped out cars, the paint's all crusty on it and everything. Now we get one that we can scratch while we put it together. I was gonna say, that means we have to actually be careful while we're putting the car together <coughs> instead of just slapping it together and painting it later. But you know, luckily everything in the engine bay and interior is steel it. So if we have to add any brackets, tabs, scratch anything, we can just touch it up with the rattle can and no one will ever know. Stuff blends in great. Just don't want to get anywhere near the outside of this car. Oh yeah, we're going to take the fenders off and all that good stuff before we start doing anything reckless. Rear quarter is going to come off. Well, first, we're going to wipe it down and make it pretty. Yeah. Because it's dusty. Dusty roads. Then we can get back to uh, installing our wiring harness on the chassis and putting all of our interior bits in there. Which we, uh, we already did. Yeah, we already did. We already did we, yeah, we already did everything. You guys get to see it before it's painted. Roll that beautiful bean footage. It's working. Fred, you're doing great, buddy. Keep it up. And a boy, you're going to be cleaning up after the mess I make, Fred. What you got? So we got the NGK center console. Uh, HGK. H NGK. Whoops, these are spark plugs. HGK. Uh, HGK center console. I had to mark so in order for it to fit down flush because it's supposed to sit flat on the trans tunnel. So I'm going to notch this around and see what else we have to do. But they were showing us on their website that the hydro actually goes right here. What kind of hydro is it? It's, it's an flat. IRP with the Tilton Master. There we go, the Tilton one. But uh, yeah, from IRP, it's gonna look real good on here. So we have to build up a base underneath this, but we have to figure out how this sits first and then work off of that. So I'm gonna chop this thing up. And I'm really allergic to carbon fiber, so this is one of the things I hate doing. So watch me in my... All right, so we measured the width of our dashboard and now the distance between the inside of our roll bars was 47 inches and our dashboard was 52 and 3 eighths. Look at the babies just flocked too. So we'll just split the difference, trim it in, and then figure out how far into the dashboard we actually have to chop while Cricket starts sweating over here with more carbon fiber parts. So Cricket went through and made some mounting tabs for the sides here. We're gonna box these in, make some kind of plate so the sides just not open like that. Mounting tabs for the top of the dashboard as well. Pretty. Nice and solid. And then we get our screws just kind of put in there as they sit right now and just kind of get everything fixed. Now we can pull those out and do our nut certs on everything. And then we're gonna mount up our steering column, see how much more of this we gotta trim out. And then... Uh, Remove I, it off the bank. Yeah, ideally we'll be ready for paint, right? Took off the front of the body kit and the rear overs. Now me and Chris are gonna start to take apart the subframes because we're gonna just gut everything out of this thing. Everything. You're gonna strip every little bit of everything out of this car, all the OEM brake lines, fuel hard lines, and all that stuff to figure out AN lines for everything. And because we're deleting the ABS and kind of simplifying everything on our braking system, we'll be able to run all of that in the OEM location, so it'll make it nice and easy for us. So first thing we're gonna do, Pull out the front and rear subframe, strip all the arms off of them, sandblast these dirty things. Then we got a whole bunch of nice parts. We're going to get our front and rear wise fab kit and our coil overs from BC and get everything pretty and make this car actually a roller again. Because, you know, moving this thing around on dollies is not the move. It's kind of sketchy. Yeah, so we're going to get started. Sure I'm very excited because it's a brand new build. Fresh build, clean slate. I would say a lot more weight in the back of the car than the front because this is... <laughs> Tippy long stockings yeah, over so here. We're going to go ahead and pull that rear subframe before things get even more sketchy. It's in here, so I'm just going to set these in here for second reason. Yeah, there we go. Just a little extra that. weight in the front. So the babies took out the gas tank. Well, we are removing all of these brake hard lines, which is a bunch of unnecessary madness. Josh was here lending a hand because it's raining so he can't do stuff. Power wires here that ran over top of the gas tank, which unfortunately during the cage installation got burned through. Not me. I didn't do it. So we're just going to remove all this run new power wires inside the car, which makes me feel better anyways. All the way up to there. But one thing that is pretty cool, I didn't know that BMW did this type of stuff, but look at these. 
Some little like bulkhead power wire connectors that go into the battery tray. I do like that. I might try and keep those guys. This gas tank has got a lot of junk in it, so we are going to have to clean that out very thoroughly. You can see all that sand left over from when they sandblast the interior of the chassis because the roll cage is really crusty. And mud daubers made a little home in there too. Josh over here broom pushing. He took Fred's job from him. Yeah, Fred's going to be unemployed now. Can't feed his mannequin children. <laughs> So we have completely stripped everything off of this. Every little plastic bracket, every nut bolt. But yeah, I mean, all in all, pretty clean chassis. Not a bunch of banged up floorboards and stuff. You can see where the burns came through from uh, the base plates getting welded on the roll cage. So those obviously have to get painted. We're gonna see if we can talk the boss man into letting us just paint the whole underbody of this car. Just cause it makes things nice and easy and dirt doesn't stick to it as well. And that undercoating stuff kind of sucks. Now we're gonna uh, take all of the bushings out of the subframe, or Chris is gonna do that, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna take the aluminum front subframe and I'm gonna sandblast it. First, gotta take off all the heat shields and stuff that we're not gonna use anymore. Motor mounts. Motor mounts, all that crap. Um, and then bring it to the booth, blast it, paint it, and then by the time I'm done with that, he should have all the stuff out of this, and then he'll bring this one and over to me. And blast that guy. And I can blast that one and we can- You think this is gonna fit inside the uh, yeah, sandblaster? I'll make it fit. Yeah, I'm sure you can make it fit, just matter if you actually going to be able to hit all the top corners of it. It's going to hurt my back because, you know, the sandblasting boot's like about eight inches shorter than it should be. So you have to like do Craig, this. Craig, it works really well on his knees. Well, I just, I can go lower. Hey, the balance, bro. Whoa. That's about the right height for the sandblaster. You thought those boots were made for Whoa. walking. All right, so while Chris is blowing out bushings and taking care of all that shit that I don't like to do, a sandblast. I'm almost done. Just gotta do a quick little once over on it now and she is good to go. Blow it all out and ready for paint. So this subframe was kind of a nightmare. There is 11 bushings in there. There's four lower control arm bushings, four subframe bushings, and three diff bushings. Most of these did not come out in one piece. We battled it out for probably two, three hours and Donnie came over with a sweet little cheat code I'll pass on to you guys. We're gonna drill bit between this outer sleeve. This is aluminum subframe being steel. When he ran the drill bit down it, you can see that it just separated the outside just, just enough to where it takes the load off the outside of the bushing, you're able to knock them out. So this is the best case scenario. So all the rest of the drill these, bit that's just big enough to hit both edges of yeah, that? Yeah, just the outer and the inner edge. But these also have double collars in them. So that's best case scenario, and then all the rest of these, this is worst case a realistic scenario. worst case scenario. like one piece at a time. The inner sleeve, the second sleeve, and then the outer collar. So you wouldn't suggest anybody to do this? I mean. Unless they got time. If you got time, by all means. I mean, we're gonna see how the new bushings go in too, which is the other thing. <laughs> I'm gonna take this crusty John yeah. and go sandblast it. Before he blasts me in the eye with another piece of rust. Yeah, yeah, I got him yesterday. You know, they say always use steel it in a well-ventilated area. I would consider that a pretty well-ventilated area. You know, it wasn't well ventilated. It's a sand blasting booth. Yeah. Craig was dying over there. It's as hot inside of that booth as it is out here in the sun. Except it doesn't taste like sulfur. Squirrel. our adapter collars in there, bolts set for our knuckles, we got our inner tie rods in, and the whole watch tab set up with these sweet BCDRs, all the angle. Whole lot of angle. Just waiting on our uh, wheel bearings and brakes and stuff to come in, so we are going to start tagging away bushings on our rear subframe. We got the two aluminum ones that came with the Wise Fab kit, and then we have our Condor bushing. Shout out to the boys at Condor for hooking us up with those. Those are going to be our diff bushings and subframe bushings. Condor not only has our motor mounts, which are beautiful little offset spicy boys, I do like that. We also have subframe bushings 
and diff bushing. And it's nice that they're not solid aluminum, so we can actually install them in the subframe without marring up our fancy paint job. everything, yeah. Shout out to Condor, really coming Shout through. Shout out to Condor. Made in the USA. Ho oh, ho. Two piece, three piece. Tree. Tree piece. So this guy has a little lock ring that goes in like so. And then it also has a recess in there. And there is a alignment dowel thing that goes on the chassis to align the subframe when you put it up. So we know that this is our front lower, and this is our front upper pushing. Nice. No press needed, just smack them. easy button. My bottom one went in like halfway by hand, so. All right, we got all of the top ones done. We're gonna put this thing upside down and bang in the bottoms. Tony, one hit. Close. So yeah, somebody in the comments left and said that in my past life I was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. If you could explain in another comment as to why you came up with that. Because we all know that our favorite dinosaur is a Velociraptor, not a T-Rex. Just got back from lunch, we went and Chris painted the diff before we went, so it's now nice and dry. All of our subframe bushings are in, all of our diff bushings are in. Shout out to Condor for really, you know, making this easy. It's a lot easier to put these in than it is to take out the stock boys. So, here you guys go, Condor Speed Shop. We actually carry all of their stuff in stock here at Drift HQ, so you just order from us, nice and easy. All right, let's take a look at Joe Diffie. So as you can see, nice welds all the way around, top and bottom. Both sides, you can put a plate in if you want to, but you don't need to. I've never had a diff break, so nobody's ever come back and said, my, my weld snapped in here. Good luck. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some black silicone around this, and then finger tighten them, and wait about 20 minutes, and then we'll actually crank it down and tighten it all the way. And then add our gear oil, and mount this bad boy back up in here, but she is nice and shiny now. You know, don't put any crusty shit in your car. If you're gonna take it out, do yourself a favor. Buy some brake cleaner. Get a shop rag. Clean up your hardware. You know, this is all crusty, and just a little bit of brake cleaner and a rag, and it looks brand new again. So you put our silicone on there. Chris is see finger the tightening it. Squeeze right there. You'd love to see it. Yeah, just a little bit to come out. A little squishy. Is my squishy? No, we'll call it my squishy. So we're gonna let that set up for a minute, and then by that time our little subframe brackets as well should be dried up. And then, oh, it's perfect. And then we put the diff, subframe, rear suspension, all that stuff in the car. Chris has a great idea of while we're waiting for our TV to dry. Put these fresh boys in. I also have a very, very bad habit of when parts come in, I just immediately want to install them in cars. So they're not just laying around. Especially stuff like this, because it's just real quick, right? Hey. All these uh, partially solid bushings were proving to be kind of difficult to get in, but we got it all lined up now. I ended up having to flip the subframe upside down. So now with this diff in place, once we get all these nuts tightened up, bolts tightened up, uh, we are ready to put this thing back in the car. Going? Going up? Yeah. It's in the hole. Oh, I'm tucky. Look at that. Beautiful. Uh, Kentucky. Now pick up the lift. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, get out of here. Obviously, we still need to put our coilovers in here, wheel bearings, hubs, and stuff like that. We're just getting stuff done as it comes in. Get it while we can. Get it while it's hot. And that rear grip kit from Wisefab is very hot. Oh, yeah. Spicy. With this clean 
old leather body on this girl. You love to see it. All right, so we got a bunch of new brake goodies, stuff that came in here. All the stuff for our dual caliper, a bunch of rotors. Not the cleanest stuff, but as well as we got our hubs in. So I got the front hub installed over here while Cricket is making old rotors look like new rotors. Yeah. Old girls were a little dusty, but for what we're doing, this is going to work out perfect. No sense in spending thousands of dollars on brand new stuffs. Yeah. We just throw a little spray paint on these things. They look brand new again. Yeah. Clean right up real nice. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. See, so, Chris has this theory. There's a two-step process. First, step one. Fuck around. Step two. You find out. Yeah. Boom. These are hard facts. This, my theory would be that we want to move our caliper up high. Makes sense, right? Yes. I think that these bolts that have the pass-through would have to be the ones for our calipers. But this slim shaved boy, I don't really know where that one's supposed to go. I was over here trying to cheat, you know, to study for the test, but this is only telling you what the Ackerman plates do. So yeah, back to Chris's problem, two-step process. Good thing we didn't read those directions. There wasn't much there. Down well, once we put right. the Calibre in there, we'll find out because it probably slides right past it and that needs to be shaved off. Shave the wheels. So this is our adapter from MozFab for these brakes. So this that. guy here needs to get the little shaved down boy. Yeah, that guy. You can't have this one. This one's on for the other side. You gotta find the one you lost. Ooh, so you see the shaved little mm -hmm. bolt right there. A little bit of clearance. You, you go right in there. Come on, baby. Oh, you want it? There she is. Too big. There you go. Right there. These things are like 180 out from each other too. You don't see that a lot. Oh wow. Yeah, usually it's one here and one here, but yeah. I like that. It's pretty sweet. Shout out to WiseFab for really making it symmetrical, you know? We can appreciate. Well, I think that's all we're leaving you with for the first video, right? Yeah. That's all the uh, BCs, the WiseFab, our calipers and brakes installed. Next video, we'll be walking you guys through how to do the fuel lines, brake lines, get our gas tank and all that stuff situated, and as well as installing all of our cool fuel system stuff we got from uh, Nuke and from Radium. Like, subscribe, comment. Drink some beers for us, will you? While you're watching this, do us a favor. Tell us what beer you're drinking while you're watching our video, and we'll tell you what beer we're wishing we could drink while we're making the video.